With a host of features and a price lower than any comparable camcorder, is the Ursa Mini the miracle camera that indie filmmakers have been waiting for? Let's find out. So today I'm talking about the Ursa Mini 4K, and I know a lot of people are waiting for the 4.6K, but it's not out yet to the masses, and this is the camera I have, so I figure I'd do a review, and I think it'll be beneficial to both future 4K and 4.6K users because it's largely going to be the same camera, the only difference being the resolution capabilities and the dynamic range. So let's jump right in. First, let's look at the specs. It can shoot 4K in a variety of recording formats, has 12 stops of dynamic range, and can shoot slow motion at up to 120 frames a second. It also has dual XLR inputs, a 5-inch flip-out screen, and gives you professional external battery options. Now, all this sounds really great at a price tag of just about three grand, but that's really just all on paper. So let's take a closer look and see if the Ursa Mini is really all it's cracked up to be. And first, I'm going to look at the video capabilities, and I'll focus on the sensor first. So the Ursa Mini 4K has a Super 35 sensor with a global shutter, and that means you don't have to worry about any kind of rolling shutter issues. And I'm somebody that comes from a DSLR background, and not having to worry about Jello Cam is just a huge plus. Now the resolutions that you can shoot at include 4000 by 2160 and 3840 by 2160 at up to 60 frames a second. And the sensor also can shoot up to 120 frames a second in slow-mo at HD. And the sensor gives you 12 stops of dynamic range, but that's actually a stop less than some of the other Blackmagic cameras. And even the pocket camera can shoot 13 stops. And the 4.6K will be able to shoot 15 stops, which is just absolutely amazing. And I can't wait to actually get some of that footage and be able to work with it. The formats you can shoot in include a variety of ProRes's such as Proxy, LT, 422, and HQ, and then you can also shoot in RAW and RAW 3 to 1. Now, the color grading capabilities are what I really love about this camera. I mean, it can shoot in two picture profiles, which are camera, which is just kind of regular, and film mode, which that's where you get the wide, the wide color gamut, the, the wide picture profile to be able to work within. And if there's one thing that Blackmagic does right, it's color. I mean, the camera has 10-bit 422 internally, and like I said, I'm somebody that comes from DSLRs, and the best film-capable DSLR can do 10-bit 422 with the use of an external recorder, like an Atomos Assassin or an Atomos Shogun. So the, the, the thought that this can do it internally and does it well, because that the picture just looks so flat and just so easy to work with, is just a huge plus for me, and I think Blackmagic really nailed it with this camera. And I know it's similar to some of the other Blackmagic cameras, but I love working with the footage because it's the first time I've worked with a Blackmagic. Now one drawback though is the low light capabilities. This camera isn't great in low light and it's kind of a known thing though so you just have to work with it. You can get a good image but I mean just don't expect to light your scene with just available light like, like you might be able to with like the A7S. And I would just try to keep the ISO at about 400. I mean, you can boost it to 800, that's where it tops out. But you do start to see some noise, and some people get horizontal bands that show up, and that could really kill the footage. But I, I don't get that at 800. However, I do get the noise, and so I, I just try to light the scene well and just keep it at about 400 ISO, and it looks pretty good. So it's not too much of a drawback. However, on, there is one side note that I have that I'm just kind of confused about. I kind of understand that it goes up to 800 and doesn't go beyond 800, even though most cameras I have worked with do have ISOs that go beyond 800. I can see why they don't, because if 800 is already kind of crappy, that they wouldn't want to go further. But then they would also don't give you many ISO choices in between with the 200 and the 400 and then the 800. I mean, most other cameras I've worked with, they do give you more ISO choices, but maybe because it's such a wide shooting format, they just assume you can fix Luma and post, but it's just a small side note. So slow motion with this camera. You can get pretty good slow motion with this, but it can be a little tricky, and it kind of relates to the low light capabilities. When you shoot slow-mo, uh, the screen gets really dark, and I mean, that's because it takes more light to get to the sensor because um, it's shooting more frames in the same amount of time. So you, and because of the low light capabilities, you just have to throw more light at the scene and just try to get it well lit or else you're gonna start seeing some noise. So just something to be careful about with the, with the slow motion. So now that we've covered video, it's time to talk about audio. And unfortunately, the audio on the Ursa Mini is awful. I think a lot of people have this problem, and if not everyone, but I certainly have it. I have noise that always comes and goes throughout the videos, and I usually have a high pitch noise that's always there, and it makes the audio absolutely unusable. I mean, I use this camera for work, and if I'm recording audio, I have to record with a separate field recorder, slate, and then combine the two in post. And I really hate that I have to do that. I was hoping to get a camera that was a step up from a DSLR that 
could do things like audio internally and I wouldn't have to get a field recorder. But I have to do it for this because the audio is just that bad. And I've emailed Blackmagic about it and it seems like they know about it and they're trying to work on it, but the only solution they've given me so far is to adjust the brightness on the display screen. And I have, and that really just seems to throttle the pitch of the annoying high pitch buzz. And I'm gonna try and include some audio samples so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna do a little audio test right now. And I've got the Rode NTG4. And it's self-powered right now, that's what the little green light means. And it's running into a Juice Link and then into a DSLR, the Samsung NX1. And check, 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 check. So this is what it sounds like into a Juice Link into the NX1. Now I'm gonna put it into the Ursa Mini. Hit record. Check, 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 recording into the Ursa Mini. Check, 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 recording into the Ursa Mini. The Rode NTG4 is self-powered. Ursa Mini settings are input, mic low. So now that you know about my gripes with the audio, I'll move on and talk about some other things that I do like about the camera, because the audio is really my biggest drawback. But I, I do like the ergonomics of the camera, just everything's really easy to use and it feels right when you're holding it and I, I love that extra handle that they have. And buttons are laid out perfectly and you can really get good focus with the button options that you have with the autofocus and with the peaking if you wanna do manually. So those are all good layouts and good choices. And I really like the removable battery. Um, I wouldn't have gotten the camera otherwise. I, I really don't like that the older cameras had fixed batteries. So I think that's a really good step forward for, for the camera. And, for Blackmagic, hopefully they continue on like that. I also really like the displays. Uh, the display gives a good image, and I love the scopes on it. And it's really easy to navigate within the display um, when you're in the settings and everything like that. And I like that you can change metadata really easily. So these are all good things about the, the display. So minor complaints. Uh, my one big complaint is the record button hesitates sometimes, and most of the time even. It takes a few seconds to start or stop, and it's more noticeable when it won't stop because that's when it's really frustrating. If I'm running out of space on a card and I'm hitting the record button for it to stop and it's still rolling, uh, I really hate that, and I hope they fix that in firmware really soon. Um, another complaint I have is that the white balance can only be adjusted by dialing in the Kelvin value, which, I mean, that's okay. Uh, I, I do it sometimes for my other cameras, but I wish you could custom white balance. That's how I typically white balance cameras. I, I don't know why they don't include that. I, I don't know, it's just different to me. So I wish they did, because um, otherwise I think you'd have to own a light meter to really nail the, the Kelvin value precisely. So I just try to go off what I know about the color temperature in my room, the lights I'm using, and then also eyeing it. But I just wish there was a more precise way. And one final thing, it's not really a complaint, but it's just something to let everybody know, is the camera doesn't come initially with what's called an ICE cable. That's the cable that plugs into the wall and then into the adapter that they do provide. And the reason they don't is because they ship internationally and plugs are different all over the world. But you're gonna have to get one somehow. And I think retailers are including them now. I'm not sure, mine didn't. But it's just one of those cables that plugs into like a commu computer monitor or a TV or something like that. So you're gonna need that if you wanna run the camera off the wall outlet. And another note, if you are running the camera off the wall outlet, that's, that's all that the wall outlet power will do. It'll, it'll power the camera. If you have a battery plugged in, it won't charge up the battery. And a lot of people might know that, but if you don't, just be mindful that you're not gonna charge the battery by plugging this into the camera. You're gonna need a battery power station as well if you're buying batteries for it. So add that into the price of the peripherals that you'll be getting along with the CFast cards and the battery itself. So be mindful of all that. That stuff can really add up. So, I mean, the essentials are the CFast cards, the battery if you're ever going anywhere outside of where there's outlets available, and uh, the the adapter to power the, the power for the, the battery and the wall adapter plug that ICE cable. So you're gonna need all those and then other things that you may need like the EVF or monitors or stuff. I mean, that's up to you and what your needs are, but just be mindful, it can all add up. So in summation, 
The Ursa Mini gives excellent visuals, and if you like color grading, you're really going to enjoy working with the footage that this provides. And although it gives pretty bad low light performance, I wouldn't say that's a deal breaker. Uh, if you know how to light and are mindful of your lighting situations, you can still get a good image out of it. But the one thing that is a deal breaker is the audio quality. The audio is awful, unusable, and you're going to have to find a different solution. Either that means recording audio separately if you do really like the visuals out of this camera or just getting a different camera. And I really hope that they can fix this. And if they do, I'll include a little annotation right across my chest here that says audio is cool again. But right now audio is not cool. Very uncool black magic. So please fix it soon. I hope it can be fixed because I just can't recommend this camera if that's the audio issue. And, and I mean, it's only good for video visual at this point. So if they can fix that, I'd love it. Love the camera. So if you did enjoy this video and you're still interested in the Ursa Mini, I did make a video that tested the visual capabilities and it was just a, just a little two minute video. So I'll put that right here. Give that a watch, see what you think. And I recorded it in various ProRes's, so it, I, I hit all of them and I did slow-mo as well. So it's got a little, little glimpse at everything in there. And if you want to see more about the menus, I did give a little menu walkthrough, so you can watch that here. And I hope you enjoyed. And if you like this content, remember to tweet me a pizza, email a picture of your dog to my dad, and make the bullmoosesociety.com your homepage.